right, and we're live. I'm here with Jim Cupco, uh, the, uh, and I'm pronouncing that correct, right? That's correct. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, owner of CrossFit, CrossFit Bar Bending uh, in East Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, and I just wanted to thank you for coming on the show, um, hanging out with me, and, and, you know, talk with me a little bit. And, uh, you know, just kind of wanted to, you know, ask about, you know, I mean, what brought you into doing this? I know you, you have another career outside here. You're a firefighter, first responder. And you also open, uh, you know, opened up this uh, uh, CrossFit. Uh, you know, when did you open up? Uh, we officially affiliated in 2013. So next month will be our six-year anniversary. But I ran a gym out of my garage for three or four years prior to that. Okay. Uh, just feeling out the market. It was just a part-time thing, you know, a labor of love, a, a hobby, more or less. You know, nothing I really considered to be. Work more or less. I have my regular nine fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. You, know, you want to help? Yeah, you know. you, my whole life, I've been enjoying helping people. My whole life, I've been involved in you know, phys ed, health, and athletics. Okay, got my degree up here. Uh, that's what I went to school for. You know, Where did you go? Kane like, University. Oh, Kane University. First graduating okay. class of Kane University. Yeah, for millennial class, two thousand. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> man. Me too. <laughs> you can do the math and circle <laughs> back and, and figure that out. I may, I think I have you by a couple of years, but but not, but yeah. not a, not a ton. But yeah, we're a couple old guys here. But yeah. uh, from the time I was old enough to hold the ball, I've been throwing a ball. You know, playing sports my whole life. AAU track. I played three sports in high school, two sports at the collegiate level, and I've been involved. You know, in athletics my entire life. Yeah, yeah. No, so, so you have that background. You have the love for it, and it kind of just started as something to do, right? Just something you were doing already, and you just started it in your garage. Oh, yeah, and... my, my father was a big uh, baseball junkie, and then it just started okay. off. You know, I guess it was when I was old enough to throw. We'd go out in the backyard. He bought me my first glove. We just tossed the ball back and forth, and uh, you know that started the whole uh, cascade of Start, events to follow. Yeah, started it going. Okay, it started the love. So you had another location prior to this one, and then you moved here. Um, I mean, can you give me a little bit of timeline? Sure. Um, let me see. Going back probably 10 years total. So let's say somewhere around 2009. Uh, I was part-time as substitute teaching, okay, using my degree for whatever I could uh, yeah. uh, to put a couple extra bucks in the bank, you know, put a couple extra. Now, were you a firefighter then too? Yes, or? yes Okay, yes. you were still. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been a firefighter since 2002, so I'll complete my 18th year there in February. Okay, awesome. Um I said I started off with a client or two in my garage. Okay, slowly built that up over about three or four years. It got to the point where I had a boot camp. I used to run these Sunday boot camps. It was like a five dollar class in my driveway, you know. and it slowly That's started great. to build up. That's yeah, great, though. Come in, throw five bucks in the hat. You know, we did a whole warm up in the street. Calisthenics had a little boom box out in the driveway, and then yeah. people would be running through my neighborhood swinging kettlebells. The neighbors started looking at me funny. <laughs> On this particular day, I had about forty people show up. You know. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it caused a little bit of a ruckus, and then uh, there was an old Chinese guy that lived down the block, and he was out working out in his front lawn with us, didn't even know what was going on. He, he, saw <laughs> he just showed up and started working. He just started doing burpees in his <laughs> That's lawn. Awesome. Yeah. That's but, awesome. Know, but you're going to get strange looks from people, too. So I knew that this wasn't, you know, wasn't going to last so long. The, the, the timeline yeah. was, was, was getting shorter and shorter on it. So that's when we decided to, you know, pursue getting a level one certification and opening up a legit brick and mortar facility. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great, man. Um, so, you know, and that, that's cool. I mean, that's, you hear that a lot though. That's true for a lot of CrossFits. They start off kind of like with, in someone's driveway or someone's backyard and, you know, someone, you know, this is kind of where it came from, right? It was kind of like one of those things where it started with uh, coach Glassman and had this idea of, of working out in a different way than people were used to, like the regular circuit training that people were doing or the, you know, three sets of 10, you know, heavy weight. You know, kind of combining the heavy weights with the, you know, it doesn't have to be heavy, but, you know, you want people to push and get to that point where they're, they're used to having a high heart rate and being able to continue to work at, at, a, at, at a power capacity, right? Well, yeah, all these things tend to be cyclical. So you see all the new marketing that's coming out from CrossFit HQ where they've got the, you know, the senior citizen population with water jugs in, the, in their living room. And that, that was really, the, I think, the, you know, the, the foundational principle that he wanted to. The competitive thing kind of... You know, took over. People that tend to gravitate towards this are competitive in nature. They were mm -hmm. ex-athletes. They, you know, they hit their pinnacle or their peak, you know, wherever they were at. They were a college athlete. They were a minor league athlete. They were just a high school athlete. And they want to find that competitive outlet to continue beyond that. They tend to gravitate towards this. But the original premise was just, you know, kind of what you alluded to before. You know, get a couple of weights, get a barbell, get a pull-up bar. Get some buddies together. And throw it out in your garage <laughs> and just, yeah. Yeah, just move. Just work out. Just have fun with it. Um, and, and that's really how we kind of started off. My garage was a less than 300 square foot garage. You know, I, I was figuring out a way to get eight, nine people in that space at one time, yeah. rotating through things, running out 
through the neighborhood, coming back in, flipping tires in my backyard, swinging kettlebells on my patio. You know, whatever, wherever we could fit somebody, you know. Yeah, just try and get them in there. You had to be creative back yeah. then. Yeah, you didn't have the same uh, luxury that you have with a 11,000 square foot facility like we're yeah. at now. Then our first location was uh, 44 West Ferris, right down the road here, okay, about a, less than a mile from this current location. That was mm -hmm. 4,000 square feet. And going from my garage at the time, which is 300 square feet to 4,000 square feet, we're like, that's a huge. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, wow, we're what never, do I we're do never now? Fill this place up. Like, this is great. <laughs> but huh? you did. Yeah. yeah. Well, within yeah. within six or seven months, uh, we started to run out of space. Uh, we were the, the, the only gym in town. There was other gyms in the area. It's a very competitive market where we are. Yeah. yeah. Here, yeah, uh, New Jersey has every, a CrossFit like on every, every corner. corner man. Pretty much. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Starbucks here. Yeah. Yeah, they're everywhere. Um, so, you know. That kind of blew us away, and a combination of the growth and then a, an issue that we had with the court reporting facility that our landlords moved in next door with some noise complaints throughout the day led to us moving into this space. Yeah. Uh, will we ever outgrow this? Probably not. This is, this is, this is where within you're, the you're, scope of control is at the far end of that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's Unless something that. happens where it's just like this an explosion of people that sure. just show up. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless East Brunswick decides they're going to overcrowd the schools and they, right, they continue to you know, build all these... Uh, <laughs> He's a uh, high-rise, you know, garden apartment and condominium complex community. Yeah, well, you have you have a good space here, and, and you have a great culture uh, around it. I mean, the the, the 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 clients you have, the coaches you have. I mean, it's just a really good, welcoming culture here. Um, you know, I, I know I've you know I've been coming here for a couple of years now. And the funny thing is, you brought up the old space that you had, and you know, my wife and I were going through photos one day, and I think something popped up on her time hop, um, and it was actually me competing at your old location. Yeah, the, uh, the, <laughs> There's the one picture of me. That we did, yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the competitions. So you were doing comp competitions there, you know, and you still do that stuff even here, right? You got one coming up. Yeah, uh, yes, we do. Um, on the 21st, it's our uh, fourth annual. Uh, we call it our C4, our classic uh, co-ed crossfit competition. Most of the workouts are are based or of uh, hero workouts. Okay, mm -hmm. the hero workout culture we all know is uh, workout designed for someone that. You know, paid the ultimate price, made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty, whether it be police, fire, military, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, that particular one, um, all the profits and proceeds went to the Wounded Warrior Foundation for that workout. And we didn't know what to expect. It was actually like a blizzard. It was a snowstorm the day. Yeah, it was. It was pretty. That. Yeah, I remember pretty, sitting yeah, like experience. during the during the because you had four thousand square feet, which sounds like a lot, but when you have that many people there, right. I think it, we had it gets used up pretty quick. I think we had one hundred twelve competitors sign up for that. Yeah, so it kind of looked like. Uh, you know, like like t ten city out in Los Angeles, like a homeless village. You know, with the oh, hallway yeah. all lined with people. You know, the the, the bathroom capacity was. Well, even where the home. athletes were, we were all kind of huddled in this one spot. And, yeah, you we, know, we there was a small competitive area. You, I mean, you did what you could. Yeah, yeah, you did what you could with the space. We, we were mean. we were more than grateful with the turnout, but when you have that many people show up and then the amount of spectators show, up, which you don't necessarily account for, it was the first time we did something like that. Yeah, yeah. We had public access television there. EBTV was there to chronicle that event. Okay. So there, was, there was a lot of the things that we had going on that day that. Uh, Added to the, yeah. No, it was, I remember it being a fun competition. I remember there was a lot of, a lot of, you know, despite everything. I mean, because, you know, that was when February. Was that a February? It was January, February. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Because it was a, there was a put of snow on the ground. Yeah. yeah. So in New Jersey, I mean, you, you get to that point in like February around here is like, you know, I mean, it's like a ghost town outside. Nobody's out because it's cold and. You know, it's a lot of times where you get snow on the ground. And that might, you know, some years it lasts all, you know, you got snow on the ground all year long. Other years you don't have that much. But I think that year we had snow pretty much throughout the whole the whole season. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. I, we even had a competitor call us up, and they, they slid out on ice and got in an accident. And they asked if they could have their heat moved back because the car was drivable. They said they were still coming. <laughs> They'll get the car fixed <laughs> That's tomorrow. That's classic. They didn't care. <laughs> Dude, I'm move, injured, but I'm coming. <laughs> just move my heat back, you know, a couple more minutes. We're going to be able to delay getting there. I was like, We'll do what we can, no problem. Just <laughs> that's great. Check but that, in when you get here, and we'll, we'll get it squared away. That speaks to the CrossFit culture, though. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, it's like, is the gym open? Like, yeah. you could see, like, a foot of snow on the ground, two feet of snow on the ground, and people are like, and, and I've seen memes posted. Yeah, you know, everybody, like, everybody saw the meme with the hands sticking out of the top of the yeah, snow, go, on the street. The is the gym going to be open over. today, yeah. you know? And, and uh, you know, that kind of speaks to the CrossFit culture, though, because it's that diehard culture, you know, when you get, you know, Someone once said, you know, the, the you know the full, first rule of Fight Club, right? Never talk about fight, fight Club. Well, the first rule of CrossFit is always talk about CrossFit. <laughs> People hear that all the time. And, you know, I guess when you get into it, you really get into it. I mean, it's kind of like a, one of those things where, you know, I've seen people come in and out of gyms and different boxes. And, you know, I've been a member of several boxes throughout my, uh, you know, uh, doing CrossFit. And 
you know, I've seen people either they come in, they either love it, and you, they just that's it. It's the you know they're they're so into it, um, or you know sometimes they just don't like it. But that's you know most of the time though, I see people really drink the Kool Aid, so to speak, and and really kind of get into it. I don't think it really comes down to you know the uh, the, the facility itself, how the initial onboarding of the member goes. You know, you can't just throw somebody in correct. there. You got to kind of yeah. you know. So certain people are right, going to gravitate directly toward it. So if you have an athletic background, okay, you're going to be able to hop right in for the most part and, and pick things up a little bit more quickly. If you don't, okay, or if, or if you're in your later on in life, if you're a master's athlete and you're just starting out or you've never actually had any formal Never worked out before. Well, some, some people worked out before, but they really don't know what they're doing. I mean, they yeah. just kind of show up and they do what the person next to them is doing or they do what the person that they want to look like is doing. Without any real instruction, they're just kind of, you know, monkey yeah. see, monkey And they could it's get hurt. Thing. Obviously, of course, yeah, you know, yeah. that, that's a concern. So we, we try to assuage those fears, you know, yeah. uh, bring them in nice and easy, okay? The program is designed, like what we say, for universal scalability, okay? So we want to meet you wherever you're currently at right now and then just continue to have you to teeter on the edge of your fitness as you need to progress. And obviously that bar will get higher and higher. Mm -hmm. uh, the progressive. Fitter, the fitter you get. Yeah. Progressive, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, because you hear a lot of, you know, there's a lot of bad press sometimes about CrossFit and people getting hurt and, you know, people say, you know, see, oh, this person has back problems now because they did CrossFit. Well, you know, I always say this, all boxes are not created equal. <laughs> all CrossFit gyms are not created equal. Um, you can't just let somebody come in because everybody wants to, go, I mean, I'll tell you what, man, even when I first started, I, I came in and I'm like, you know what, and through the grace of God, I never got hurt, but. You know, it was one of those things where I came in, I saw these guys pulling, throwing 250 up or throwing 225 up. And, yeah, I mean, I was already a strong person because I'd already had an athletic background to some degree. But, you know, I was doing it wrong, you know. And, and, and you know, you don't want, you know, so it, it took a lot. you got to get the ego out of the way. Correct. When you, <laughs> when you allow someone to ingrain poor movement habits, oftentimes it's a much more difficult road trying to correct them. You have to break things down and get them mm -hmm. to understand that, you know, right. They have to check the ego and take, you know, mm -hmm. three or four steps backward to eventually take those five or six steps forward. Yeah, and you got to check it And a lot of people don't want to do that. Yes, yeah. you know, it, it's a very, uh, you know, it, it's a tough thing to drill through people's yeah. heads sometimes. Uh, but once you get them to finally come around to it, okay, then they start to understand it. You just got to, uh, you know, massage everybody in a different way. Yeah. You know, some people respond more to a more in-your-face aggressive approach, and yeah. some people you have to kind of, yeah. you know, work the corners. And, you know, it might be easier if, yeah. you know. You got to massage them a little <laughs> bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you don't bruise them up, yeah. you know, because the last thing you want to do is hurt somebody's feelings, but you also want to make sure everybody stays safe. And, Correct. you know, if you come in and you do a clean and you're and you're somebody who's not moving right, you know, it's movement efficiency. If you're not, if you don't know how to do I mean, there's, it's not just throwing a weight up in the air. I mean, you know, people think, you know, they see a lift and they don't really understand what's going on with the lift and why the person's moving in the way they're moving. And then they come in, they pick up this heavy weight, and they could potentially cause serious back damage. Um, so it's important that you start with, you know, I mean, I'll tell you what, I remember when my coach at that time told me, look, you need to take all this weight off <laughs> and work with the bar. <laughs> just work with the bar. Yeah, or just a piece of plastic, just a PVC pipe. A PVC yeah. pipe, yeah, and just because if you can't move well, with the PVC and get in the position with the PVC pipe. Then you shouldn't be moving. Then you shouldn't be or moving. Or won't be moving well with weight. No. It's just going to exacerbate the problem. And what it ends up doing is it pushes you into a different position and your body can get into. So, and this was one of the things that was explained to me. When you, when, you know, when you put heavy weight on a bar, it hides imperfections, right? So if you're putting a heavier weight on, and let's say you're really struggling to get into that squat position with your, arm, with your elbows up and, and your arms up, and your wrists locked back, and the weight's resting on your chest, if you can't get into that with a PVC pipe, well, you throw a heavy weight on there, it's going to push you into that position. Yeah. But, but you're going to put stress on the, the But, you're, but on you're not doing it efficiently, and you could get hurt because you're basically jamming your body. <laughs> Logic would tell you that, yeah. Yeah, you know. but, you know, it's, it's hard yeah. to roll back. You get somebody in who's in, you know, pretty decent shape. They still, you know, it doesn't mean they can lift, you know. It's, uh, you know, you still got to learn all that stuff from the, from the bottom up and build it up. So, you know. Um, this is true. <laughs> so, True words have never been spoken. Yeah. <laughs> Truer words have never Well, I don't know. But, you know, sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. You know, um, I still sometimes struggle with my ego. Uh, I think we all do at times. So I got to check myself or somebody else has to check me sometimes and make sure that I stay in my, stay in my lane, so to speak, with that. But, uh, you know, uh, so talk about a little bit more about, uh, you know, I mean, you, you – you have a huge class this morning. I mean, the, the class this morning was, was enormous, and you guys were doing a workout called uh, 
uh, the Filthy 50, right? Was that the, that was the word? Oh, it was kind of a hybrid of it, too, because I, I... Oh, it was the original Filthy 50. Was it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, n n nothing changed. So when we do classic CrossFit, just leave it's, it the way it is. Right? Don't mess with it. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, you know, the magic is in the movements. Uh, it's one of Greg Glassman's old quotes, and, you know, they put those workouts together. They tested them. They stood the test of time for years on end, you know. People think CrossFit's been, a, you know, around for a little shot in the dark here. It's about 20 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been around for a while since, I think... Just, 2006? I reached, yeah, I was reached mainstream popularity. 2001, I believe. Was it really? Yeah. That long? Uh, okay, I didn't know that. I know the first CrossFit games were 2007, right? Correct. Um, and James Fitzgerald won that, won that one. But it's very different now. I mean, you see the games now comparatively to what it was. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> it's the, like... The capacity is through the roof. Yeah, they say every, every 20 years human capacity increases by 10 to 15%. Is that the? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, yeah. There's studies, studies out there that are proven things along those lines. So, if you like, if you gravitate back towards that time, like a, a name that might resonate with people is Andy Thorstadter. Andy Thorstadter got her first muscle up at the CrossFit. Yeah. Game. 2010. Yes. Yeah. Now athletes are doing, you know, f female athletes are doing 15, 20 unbroken repetitions. Oh yeah. And back then that was considered, you know, like a, you know, a penultimate skill. It was a, uh, you know. The right of passage. You know what? One. You know what gymnasts. One. You know what gymnasts call that, right? Yeah. Getting into position. Correct. <laughs> it's not even a. For them, it's a basic skill. It's not even a scored movement. Yeah, but but for, in cross, I mean, yeah. like I said, for CrossFit, it was it was for, something that for John Q. CrossFit, that's forty five years old, that walks in off the street. Oh you know, yeah. For them to be able to get one is a major accomplishment. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and and it's a it's a process too. I remember when I got my first one. I don't even remember what year it was, but you know, I was at a, a gym that's no longer around. Um, you know, and I got my first muscle up, and I was like, wow. You know, I thought I was on top of the world. And I, and I had video of it. I still have video of it. Maybe I'll post that. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, got, I got video of it because I used to always shoot video of myself to, you know, number one, I, I always believe an athlete should. If you don't have somebody directly coaching you at that moment, you should be taking video. If you're Olympic lifting or doing a new movement, to just check your efficiency because you may think you're moving in a certain way. And you look at the video and you're like, oh, man. The video tells a different story. Yeah. <laughs> the video tells it all. Often tells a different story on that. But uh, I remember I got my first one, and it was ugly. When I look back at it, I mean, just, just a couple of years ago, I remember finding that video again. I'm like, and, I, and I was like, I look back at that thing, and I was like, wow. I got up. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, it wasn't textbook. It was definitely an ugly movement. It was like the chicken wing and, and rolling around, and finally I pushed myself up into it. But, uh you know, much more efficient these days. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, you're seeing, uh, you know, the capacity of these athletes, um, especially, you know, the games-level athletes are, are just, like, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's, it, well, it's a full-time job now for these people. I mean, uh, the, the, anytime the money and the sponsorships and the major companies start getting involved, you know, the, the average person that's coming to, into the gym, the, the normal class scenario doesn't look like what you see on TV, okay? It's just like when you go to a batting cage, okay, and, and yeah. you get in with the 70-mile-an-hour the, the Fast, that's the fast pitch, right? Yeah. And you think you're a badass because you're cracking you every ball. Because you crack it, yeah. <laughs> now you've got, <laughs> now you know, at, 90 at, mile. <laughs> at the major league level, yes, you've got a guy that's running a 90-mile-an-hour curveball, right, that's breaking and moving. It's not just a straight, you know, lob, a line drive out of a machine. And so, you can't even touch it. Right, correct. So, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's two different worlds that you're talking yeah. about there. You know, th these people have, you know, full-time uh, staffs around them, you know, in terms of the chiropractors, physical therapists, yep. so they're getting massage therapy on a regular basis. They're dunking themselves in ice tanks. So cryotherapy recovery becomes the biggest yeah. thing. The training volume just seems to increase year over year over year. And that's oh, basically yeah. uh, what competitive CrossFit has become. How fast can you recover and perform well in the next workout? So these people are constantly, you know, performing triage on their bodies in between the workouts. How quickly can I bounce back? How much food do I need to consume mm -hmm. that I can continue to maintain and sustain the necessary energy levels? Okay? Anybody who's gone through a CrossFit workout like the workout that we did today, Filthy 50, takes the average person... 25 to 30 minutes to do that of continuous work, yeah, okay? Yeah. That requires... It requires capacity. It, re it requires <laughs> nutrition, yes. It requires a lot of, enough food, enough carbohydrates to fuel the body. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. a very glycolytic uh, environment, that particular workout. Glycolytic meaning glycogen, okay? Glycogen is derived from carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that store in your muscles, okay, you're going to crash and burn over the course of that workout. Uh, that's why um, my focus um, lately and moving forward into the next year and the years to come is really going to be on nutrition and clients because um, recently I started doing full-time consulting with members. Mm -hmm. It's another additional service that we provide, and I'm, I'm blown away by how little people know and understand about oh, yeah. nutrition, timing of nutrients, food, labeling and reading, okay, 
proper weighing and measuring of yeah, food. Looking okay. at your macros correctly. Yeah. What is a macro? They yeah. don't even yeah. know. Yeah. You know. People yeah. don't even know. You know? And then, then you bring in micros, so there's something else besides And you the bring macros. out a scale there's, for them. They're yeah. like, what the hell am I doing with there's this scale? Too. There's other stuff in this food? <laughs> yeah, there's other stuff in the food, yes. <laughs> and that's that's right. I mean, because, you, know, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I say this all the time. I could go to the supermarket, and, I, and you know, I eat pretty healthy, but go to the supermarket and you find the health set like the stuff that's actually healthy is like a quarter of an aisle maybe <laughs> right then you go to the rest of the store but that stuff is super expensive eating healthy is expensive unfortunately you know you're yeah. penalized for wanting to eat healthy but if you want to eat garbage i mean you know Literally you can go buy it's cheap, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's i think that's what people tend to gravitate towards be you know for that reason the other one is just you're right they're not as educated as they should be if something says healthy on it doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy, right? If something says healthy snack or, or yeah. protein bar, well, see, guess what? Look at the sugar that's in that free protein. Is what you see all the time. Fat free is one of the biggest. And uh, fat don't mean fat. Yeah. <laughs> fat don't mean necessarily mean it's bad. You know, there's healthy fat and there's you know. Fat is fat gets a bad rap. Fat's just another energy substrate. It's just mm -hmm. another source that your body uses for energy. Mm -hmm. It just breaks down into the bloodstream slower than carbohydrates do. Carbohydrates are more easily accessible, mm -hmm. okay, to the muscle cells. The fat takes longer, okay? It's nine calories in a gram of fat, okay? It's two and a quarter times as dense as a carbohydrate, which only has four grams, okay? So just, you know, yeah, logic will. would dictate that it's going to take longer for that yeah, to get Yeah, it's going to take longer for it to get there, which, you know, most most people at this at this state, the way we are today, want that quick <laughs> boost oh, of yeah. energy. Yeah. They just want that. The problem is with that quick boost comes the quick crash, right? So carbohydrate, carbohydrates, you know, yeah, it's a source of energy. You get that energy out of it, but it's not going to be long-term. Well, that's where it comes to understanding, you know, the glycemic index and how things tend to fall on there, right? You have foods that are going to spike your insulin levels and manipulate your insulin levels much more quickly, okay? Yeah. Those tend to be the things that are, that are white, opaque, that have little coloring, okay? We always say, you know, your plate should be very colorful, okay? Then you have foods that are going to break down into your system much slower, okay? Mm -hmm. The lower glycemic carbohydrates. Those are the ones that, for the most part, our athletes want to predominantly focus on because that's going to help you maintain a smooth insulin level throughout the day so you're not hitting those peaks and valleys. You know, you know everybody saw a, a kid, you know, slug back a candy bar and then run around the room for a maniac for like 10 or 15 minutes and then, <laughs> and then boom. And then, boom. He's done. done. <laughs> He's out. Uh, but if you're consuming, you know, uh, you know, sweet potatoes, brown rice, things like that, you, you don't have that yeah, roller coaster slower. ride. It yeah. gets into your bloodstream slower, it's a complex. so you have a smooth, yeah. sustained release of energy, right? Fats will provide the same thing. Okay, fat gets into your bloodstream even slower, and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why things like the, you know, the the, the low carb movement and these ketogenic diets and things like that. Have I was so going to ask you about that. What do you think of a keto diet? I actually did it myself um, for about four months, just so I had the first hand knowledge to uh, be able to relay that to clients. If I thought it was a tool that someone could use, and there's a lot of, you know. If you read the case studies and the research, there's things that uh, people are cautionary about in terms of the long-term ramifications and effects of it. But it's going to take years for that to play out. Nobody really knows because nobody's done this for an extended yeah, period of time. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that research is inconclusive. You have to kind of you know, make inferences based on the information that's available. Uh, when I did it, I actually felt it very liberating. Um, I was eating maybe three times a day, okay? Uh, on a more traditional diet where, you know, a, a macro-balanced diet, generally every three to four hours, I'd, I'd start to feel a little bit hungry and I feel like I need to eat myself. Mm -hmm. I'd start to feel my energy level dip and I need to, to feed myself. I could go all day yeah. on a ketogenic diet without consuming anything. I mean, I was probably, I was still taking in about 3,000 calories a day, but it was three <laughs> 1,000-calorie meals because yeah, the fat's yes. so dense and you just plow through it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'd eat breakfast and it'd be like 5 o'clock in the afternoon and I'd be like, oh, I, I forgot to eat lunch. I should probably sit down and eat something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it freed you up. Uh, it was more liberating in terms of, you know, being able to plan your day out better, have, have more time to do things. Like I don't have to stop and prepare another meal again. I don't have to stop and prepare another meal again. I don't have to stop and eat again. You know, and then you're constantly being sidetracked because you're shoving more food in your face. Uh, you could just go for an extended period of time. Uh, and the mental clarity was the thing that was the most addictive for me. It's so you found that to be... Uh, there's a lot of research that says that, yes, it, it tends to help uh, with the serotonin levels and uh, uh, clearer thinking, uh, you know, a more lucid thought process. And I definitely experience that uh, with, without a doubt. Um, you know, at the time, I was actually studying for my deputy chief's test uh, in the fire department, and uh, I felt like it really helped with just being able to zone in and focus on my studying, because anybody who's ever studied for a fire exam knows that the material is dry. Yeah, and it's not fun to <laughs> <laughs> and it's repetitive. And it's, re okay. you know, it's the same thing over and over again. So basically all you're doing is just trying to, you know, regurgitate this information and be able to spit it out. So to be able to really be able to dial in and focus on it and not be distracted, I thought was a, a big help to me in, in 
studying for this last test. Okay. All right. Good. Well, I mean, so that you know, it's it's so you got some good clarity from the you know, it seemed like it helped you mentally focus better. Um, you know, and like I said, there's a bunch of diets out there now, and it's hard to weed through what works, what doesn't, what's good for you, what's bad for you, because everyone that comes out, you know, you got people that are on one side going. You know, hey, this is the greatest diet ever. This is going to help you. And then you got people on the other side saying, "Oh, this is not good for you. You should never do this." You know, like you got, uh, I mean, you got the whole thirty. I heard that's out there. Well, that, that's part of the problem is people read all this different stuff and they get confused. Like, well, I don't, I don't know what's right for me. They're yeah, like, and it's justified. I mean, the answer is going to be very specific to you. Everybody's body's going to gravitate towards. Something, something a little bit different. Yeah, right. yeah. So you've got to kind of play around with some of these things. You know, the, to test the waters, dip your toe in here, dip your toe in there, and, and find out what works best for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what are your goals and interests at the time, and does it align with that? Okay. Uh, the fact you have that slower release uh, of energy with the ketogenic tile diet, I noticed that I felt a lot better in longer duration workouts. Okay. So if you're an endurance athlete, if you're a runner, if you're a marathoner, okay. it might be something that suits you because it's allowing you to disperse that energy level over a long course of time. Your sport or your chosen activity takes has a long timeline. It's longer to finish. Yeah. Okay, if you're doing a typical CrossFit workout, which you know most times is like you know power output five to fifteen minutes, right? <laughs> a lot of power output it doesn't might not, uh, might not help. It doesn't necessarily lend itself towards that. You want yeah. something more glycolytic. Okay, you want those carbohydrates in your system because yeah. the energy doesn't get to where it needs to be fast, fast enough, enough yep. right, for you to get through it. So I noticed that top end strength. Okay, which is something that I generally uh, is not my forte anyway. Really took a nose dive on that, but my endurance level. You know, yeah, you were able to stay in a 40-minute duration Correct. workouts okay. a lot better and be able yeah. to be more consistent. Anything that was sustained cardiovascular activity, yeah. you know, that went into that, you know, that aerobic capacity realm of things was a walk in the park. Yeah, uh, and, that, and that's really important, you know, because you, you got to know what to prepare for different types of events or different types of workouts. You know, it may take different things that are going to work well for you. You know, uh, it's, it's when you look at... Uh, there's also a diet out there, the, the Renaissance Periodization Diet, which is out there. I don't know if you've heard. You, you yeah, probably RP heard. strength. It's uh, more RP. or less, uh, you know, uh, if it fits your macros or macro counting. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 they're all kind of in the same realm. Uh, paleo's out there. Paleo was really big for a while. I don't hear too much about that anymore. Yeah, we've I mean, got zone, okay, which is just a percentage breakdown, you know, 40% uh, carbohydrates, 30% protein, 30% fats. Okay, they use a block system with a a certain number of macronutrients to each block, and you try and balance out the blocks throughout the course of the day. So for information on this stuff, I mean, obviously you're a wealth of knowledge on this, but where would the average person, is there a place that they can go to get that information on? Because it's a lot of just, it's just stuff out there. And, and yeah. you know, where's a good resource? Do you have one, or is there? Is it just stuff you've learned? I mean, I say smartphones for dumb people, okay? You know, ask Siri, ask the Google. Um, <laughs> You got to weed through. I mean, I don't believe everything you read on the internet. Obviously, there's a lot. Yeah, of, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Out there yeah. Uh, the most credible sources that I tend to come across: uh, Mark's Daily Apple. That's a great blog to subscribe to. He releases stuff periodically throughout the week, and then he does a Sunday blog. That's Mark Sisson's okay. blog. If anybody's familiar with him, he's the the, the primal diet, primal kitchen guy. Okay. Uh, and I'll, and I'll post a link out. to that on the. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. He's he's one of the best guys to go out there. Okay, if you look talking about the, the ketogenic diet, there's a professor down in Florida University by the name of Dom D'Agostino. Uh, if you Google search him, I mean, he's been on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's been on several other um, uh, strength conditioning style podcasts. Okay. Um, he was actually hired by the military. He's one that implemented the ketogenic diet within the Navy SEAL, specifically the Navy SEAL diver program. And really? Uh, the, okay. the military is wow. very big on the ketogenic diet right now. Um, so he's someone who's in that. Um, uh, you know, in that mold, in that foray. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with uh, Chrissy May Cagney. They may know that name, too. She's the Donuts and Deadlifts girl, okay? Uh, she runs Black Iron. I just Iron. love the name of yeah. that, Donuts and Deadlifts. <laughs> she, she, she runs uh, something called Black Iron Nutrition, I believe is the name of her company. Yeah. Uh, I tend to gravitate towards her style the best because she's got a, it's, it's, a, it's a very much a, a blank piece of clay that you kind of mold to yourself. Uh, yeah. she, she doesn't have a whole bunch of rules or parameters in there. Uh, I model... Uh, my advice and my style more along the lines of what she tends to advise uh, okay. than any of the other things. For most clients, okay, we, we'll start there as a baseline, and then we'll yeah. kind of build off of that. And then you figure out what works for them because, you know, I mean, once everybody's again, everybody's gonna different. different yeah. Everybody's going to be different. I know for me, I was on the paleo diet for a while, um, and for a good period of time, it was great. And then all of a sudden, I just started feeling not so good. 
Um, it's not that it was, a, it's not, it's a, I'm not saying paleo diet is a bad diet. I know that for me over a period of time, it was not something I could sustain. So I had to switch things up a little bit. I had bit. a similar experience when I messed around, but I felt great in the beginning, and then I noticed my energy levels started to wane. It just drops. Yes. Yeah, it just drops um, for I me. Know, I don't yeah. know if it was, and it's just a, you're limited in your selection. You know, the best diet, I tell my clients all the time, the best diet for you is something that you can adhere to for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. If this is just going to be a flash in the Sustainable. Pan for you, has right. to be sustainable. Then you're going to be on this ebb and flow roller coaster again, okay, because eventually temptation is going to take over. Your willpower is going to break, and you're going to dive right back into the old bad habits. And then it's the two yeah. steps forward, three steps back again. Yeah. There was a, I, I was at a gym, you know, I, I spent, you know, like I said, I've been doing CrossFit for quite a long time. But, you know, and... This one gym used to have, a, a like, every few months they'd have it. And this is not a bad thing, a paleo challenge or a, you know, uh, some type of diet challenge, whatever it was. And it, it's great. I mean, it gets people focused. It, it educates people, has people learn about it. But what, one thing I would notice was, you know, people would get through. It would be a 30-day challenge. Day 31, let me We're tell you something. To the bar. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's, like, completely off the wagon. Yeah, yeah, like, they're doing great. Their workouts are getting better for about a month. And then day 31, they come in, and it's a, it, oh, it, for lack of a better way of putting it, it's a shit show, <laughs> is, yeah. is what it turns in. And we used to warn people, too, like, you know, don't run out and just go crazy because, you know, you've been used to eating pretty clean for a month. Now you're going to go out and eat a bunch of garbage or do whatever, and it's going to hit you hard. Yeah. Well, what I try to tell people when I do fall off the wagon like that is pay attention to how you feel the next day, okay, or the next, yeah. the next couple of days. Okay? Take and a you, picture of yourself yeah. that day. Yeah, you, you shoot some video all day. have that hangover effect, okay? Oh, Similar yeah. to someone that went out and, and, and binge drink the night before and ate a bunch of crap food. You wake up yeah. the next day and, and, you, and you feel like shit, for yeah. lack of a better terms, okay? It yeah. takes a while for you to kind of recover. And the older you get, the longer it takes for you to recover. Oh, yeah. I know I that one, man. Like that. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. So, you, know. you know. Do what makes you feel good, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, was it worth it? Was was that, to me, you know, a couple of hours of pleasure worth you flushing away two or three weeks of hard work yeah. and diligence? And, and, you know, the thing is, the same thing happens. This is what goes back to our talk about sustainability because the same thing happens when people go on these crash diets. They go on these crash diets. They're not sustainable because they're just unrealistic to, to survive that way for a long period of time. And then as soon as they're done, they just, as soon as the time period's over, they just. Okay. It's what's commonly known as metabolic syndrome, right? So, you know, people will tend to starve themselves, right, is the way they, they tend to go. And they think, well, the less is more. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, but by not eating, what you're doing is teaching your body to hold on to everything that you're going to eat. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't know when the next meal is so coming. So when you put it back in, consistent. it gets worse. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so what happens is, right, your body wants to store everything because it doesn't know when you're going to feed it again. So that it accelerates all your processes. Your hormonal levels drop off significantly. Mm-hmm. Okay? Things don't respond the same way. Uh, I eat 3,500 calories a day. And people are like, well, how do you maintain you know, a fairly lean physique the whole year round? And you eat that much. I eat like half of what you're eating. because my body's used to blowing through the calories. And you're so, probably okay? eating several times a day, right? Right. I mean, no, it just, just makes it more palatable. I mean, yeah. the, the timing is the most important thing. The main yeah. thing is hitting an overall caloric goal each day for whatever your goals are, maintenance, weight gain, weight loss. Uh, but, yes, it's just easier to digest and process the mm-hmm. food if you if, if I've been eating five 700-calorie meals, okay, versus yep. two 1,700-calorie meals, okay? Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. That just, you, know, you don't want to sit there and just gorge yourself and then go the rest of the day and then have them not do that again. Like, just space it out a little bit, and yep. you'll feel a little bit better throughout the day. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of like my methodology has always been I, I eat probably about five meals a day, uh, but they're all kind of a small – and this is just for me. I mean, this is not, um, you know uh, – a guy named Chris Cresser wrote a book called uh, the Pers- Your Personal Paleo Code, which I took some stuff out of. And, and it's about, you know, some of that stuff was, was talking about, you know, eating several small meals a day uh, and it being better for your metabolism, how your body metabolizes. And, and once again, you go down to your personal code <laughs> of, of diet, whatever that is. So some people may not respond that well to doing that. You know, for me, that works. Uh, for somebody else, that might. In not. the last ten years, there's been more money put into nutritional research than there was in the previous fifty years. Everybody yeah. used to go just by the FDA regulations, whatever the government said. Oh yeah, fine, that's it. You know, load up on the carbohydrates. Oh, we know, we know the BMI down. is complete, complete crap at this yes. point. Uh, we know yeah, that. Yeah, any bodybuilder is going to come back as being. An obese. I'm obese. Yeah, I'm obese. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm not a bodybuilder, but I'm in pretty good shape. Mm-hmm. But for my height and weight. They look at me and they're like, you know what, you, you know, you're you're kind of off the chart here on that. And, and you got to look at hormone levels, right? You got to look at, uh, you know, 
fat ratios. You got to yeah. look at uh, the, the the ratio of the, your shoulder and chest circumference to your waist circumference. Okay, those would be the more yeah. you know to really factors it. of your health. Correct. Yeah, to measure it out. Um, so we talked briefly about recovery. Um, you know, and that's super important. I mean, you know, and you and I both talk. You know, we talk about that every once in a while because you know, both both of us are. You know, I'm going to say it, we're in our forties. We're old and beat up. Yeah. <laughs> we're in our forties, and you know, I constantly say, you know, I could still compete hard. I could still go hard. And I could still compete with the twenty somethings, but I don't I have to. Like I have either. to lay there for a while now afterwards, or I have to take a nap. <laughs> But that's, you know, I mean, I guess that's just part of getting older. I mean, it's part of the process. But, you know, I think one thing with older, pe- older people and older athletes, and not, e- not just older athletes, but older people in general, it's important, you know, to keep moving. I think that's one of the things you really got to focus on as you get older. You know, not, you know, you don't want to become sedentary. And because uh, once you start doing that, things just start to really fall apart. Yeah, that's what it I've comes seen. down to uh, understanding your own strengths and weaknesses, your own limitations. Uh, like I had a major elbow surgery, and even after the surgery, I haven't regained full range of motion in my elbow. So I know it's a problem for me. It's something I have to pay a little more attention to. Certain days, if there's movements placed in a workout back to back that I know are going to stress that, I have to pick which one of those days I want to do, or I have to scale back both days if I want to do them both. If I want that balance out there and, and not push myself as hard as I would ordinarily. I've got to spend a little bit more time. Uh, some, uh, if the workout's going to be overly intensive on that particular joint that day, warming it up, mobilizing it, and pushing it through different positions, getting it as loose and pliable as I can so that yeah. it will perform its best. And then on the back side of that, you have to try and reestablish that range of motion because you know, the, the exertion that you're going to go through, the tension you're going to put the muscle under, is going to tighten everything up. Yeah, if you allow it to remain back. there, it's just yeah. going to get tighter and, and tighter. So you've got to work on loosening things up, okay, returning the body back to homeostasis or a regular natural level. So you can come back and do it all the next day. Or it comes back to what we talked about with the with the top level athletes in the recovery process. Oh yeah, because it's and they spend probably more time on recovery. <laughs> I mean, they have a heavy workout schedule. Don't get me wrong. When you're looking at CrossFit Games athletes and high level athletes, is you know when they got this whole team around them and they got you know uh, Matt Fraser constantly talks about you know his family and the people around him make his life easy so he could just concentrate on winning the CrossFit Games, which he's done I think four years in a row now. That's correct. Um, there's a whole Instagram page dedicated to feeding Matt Fraser. Yeah, that's that <laughs> <It's just laughs> have to look that up. Posting I meals that he consumes throughout the day. Yes. <laughs> that's great, uh, and he probably puts in a lot of calories. I'm sure he does. But you know, these guys all have a lot of. You know, not everybody can get to that point, which is I think. You know, looking at you know the evolution of the CrossFit Games because they had some major changes this year, uh, major changes on how they do how they do things. You know, they have a. You know, I think, how many people did they bring in? I think it was like a hundred and something people, right, they brought down? I don't even know. I haven't had a chance to catch up with it. Really, the only thing I got to watch live was on Sunday. I was on vacation with my family the week that uh, was going on. So yeah. I would pop in, you know, pop in when, when you the could. baby took a nap, and I pulled up for 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here. Yeah, so yeah. I really didn't get a good idea of what was going on. I was just checking, uh, you know, like the morning chalk up in the morning for updates. and. and, uh, and it, it was pretty interesting, though, because they brought, you know, they had a whole lot of uh, – more athletes this year than ever, but in day one, they cut, like, half the field. <laughs> so That was crack. Well, what they did was they gave up. I kind of like the way that they did it this year. I mean, nobody likes change, but what they did was yeah. they gave the opportunity for people that probably would have never had the opportunity to get put that game. jersey on and go out there and have that experience. They gave them that, that 15 yeah. minutes of fame, okay? Yeah. How many people, you know, that, that are in a competitive realm in this would, would have loved to have done that? You know? Oh, yeah. Would have yeah. had that as, like, the, yeah. their pinnacle apex goal for them. This is my dream that I've been working for for the last five or ten years. And they got to put that hat on and wear it for the day. I think yeah. that's a pretty cool thing. I think it's cool. And, and I'll tell you, you know, at first, when I first heard what they were doing, I was very critical, man. I mean, I know you know. I, I was talking a lot about it. I was posting a lot about it because I was very critical on, um, you know, what was going on in CrossFit. There's still some things I'm kind of like, okay, um, you know, but, you know, because I, I, I got into CrossFit because of the games. I mean, that was, you know, my kind of like, I was like, okay, I want to get into this because I, I really want to just compete like these guys are doing and go out there and do what they're doing. And I thought it was an interesting uh, take on fitness, you know. And not everybody comes. There's two types of uh, people I think that come into CrossFit. There's the hyper-competitive and then there's the people who just want to, you know, as, as uh, James Fitzgerald puts it, just want to look good naked, <laughs> right? People who just want to <laughs> get yeah, fit. Or, or so, people that are a little bit older in our range, maybe just, I want to chase my kids around and not be yeah, exhausted. I don't want to, yeah, I want to be able to function. I want to be able yeah. to get up and stand up when I'm 80 years old, yeah. right? There's those people. So you got a couple. I was the one that came in as, you know, I want to go out and be competitive. I'm, I, you know, 
piss and vinegar, all kinds of just want to go out and have, a, you know, be the best I can be. Um, you know, and so I've, I've always watched the evolution of where the games were going. And, and this year when it came out and they were doing things, the announcements and, you know, the announcements were kind of rough this year. Um, you know, I, I appreciate what they're doing. You know, I just I, I love when Dave Castro used to come out because he's the guy you love to hate, right? <laughs> he's the guy who comes out. I mean, there's shirts that say I hate Dave Castro or Dave Castro is the devil. So having him do the announcement was always a kind of an event. It was fun. You know, in my house, we'd sit down, we'd watch the announcement, we'd talk about the workout. You know, sometimes we'd be like, oh, that sucks, or this is good, or, you know, this is going to be awful. You know, this is going to be a horrible workout. Um, you know, and this year they had just a bunch of different boxes doing it, which I think it's – I understand what, what Glassman's doing. He's giving it back to the, you know, to the, to the boxes, so to speak, getting the big conglomerates out of it, um, you know, giving it back to the people, so to speak. Um, so that part of it, I'm still kind of like, all right, I, I still want to see Dave Castro do the announcements. But the other piece of that, um, you know, when they said they're bringing all these people, I was like, ah, I don't know if I like that. Um, I have to reverse myself on that. I mean, I, I really kind of like the way they did it this year. I like the fact that on the last day, there's only 10 athletes uh, on male and female, and, and the teams got cut down because it, it did seem a bit much years back where everybody still competes. Like, you got people that don't have a chance competing in the last heat, and they're still <laughs> – you're still watching them. I've never actually been to the to the games themselves, but I'm, I would imagine from a spectator point of view, right? You would see you could see it on TV. You would see the stadium, you know, fairly empty. It would look like you know, like yeah. a, like a preseason football game where half the people the last day, the most important day for those for those first <laughs> couple of heats, and and then everybody's rushing in to yeah. see the, the the top level athletes that are still yeah. in the competitive hunt. Yeah. So, yeah. so from that perspective, I mean, it may have been it makes it more exciting I think. as a spectator, but right, the, the so the action was more sustained. I guess yeah, uh, would be a, a more enjoyable experience for the. Uh, yeah, for the spectator, it's like a basketball game. There's constantly something going on. Okay, yeah, a basketball game. There's no low in the action or a hockey game. You know, there's constantly movement, constant movement. There's no, you know. Yeah, even watching the, even watching the cuts. You know, they're like you're they're announcing the cuts. You're like, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> you know who's getting it this time. You know, so it, it was pretty exciting. The only thing I probably would say is, you know, cut down the amount. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I there's two sides of that. You know, I I, I like the fact that they had. You know, a lot of athletes come, and I can appreciate the fact that people got to put on that jersey. But, you know, the other side of that is, okay, is it too many athletes that they have? And well, so cutting half the, the field, the, field uh, in two workouts is a big cut. I think I saw something <laughs> to the effect of next year they're going to guarantee everybody three workouts, I think. was Okay. I think right, I read, so don't quote me on that, but I read something along those lines. Yeah, even after the first workout, which was a run rope climb, uh, I think, run rope climb overhead squat workout. Which, if you're a runner and somebody who can rope climb and you can get that overhead squat, which was 185, uh, you know it's a pretty, it's a pretty good overhead squat, yeah. and you got to do it eight times. I think was the was the workout, but uh, you know, but if you're somebody who's a pretty good runner and and good at rope climbing, you could get through that event over somebody who might have, you know, I mean. If you look You're at not the, going to be anybody who deserves to be on a podium at the CrossFit game. <laughs> Even if you've got a gravitation towards those guys are don't have any holes in their game. That's that's how you get to that level. Okay? They're, well, they're really good at everything. They're not kind of good at something and kind of good at something else. Yeah. They're not so good at this. They're solid across the board. Well, I'm I'm just going to go back to uh, real quick to to just go back to that that thought because um, if you go to Rich Froning in in two thousand I think it was two thousand and twelve came in like thirty something place in the first workout which probably if there were all those athletes might have dropped him right out of the you know and that was one of the years he won the crossfit games so that might have that might have taken him out i don't know i mean it, it it's not it wasn't that way at that time so you could never really say but i just like i said it's one of those things where i i think they should at least give people a few workouts doing a few different things i think if they let people do three that's a pretty good indication that they're rounded in the right ways to keep going well, or not. The good measure of any, uh, you know, any, any program is you test and you retest. Okay, so they ran this out. They, they, yeah. they were oh, yeah. the, their own worst and best critic, however you want to look at that. They, okay, they evaluated it, and then they make changes the next year. If they just left it the same and, you know, chose not to grow and said this is the be-all, end-all, and this is what it is, and that's it. We're yeah. not going to, you know, not gonna take a look anything. back at this. Yeah, then, you know, well, did you really learn anything from the experience? Probably not. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, so if they're, you know, their own critic, if they're self-critical, that, that's a good thing, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. No, I think How it's going to... can we make this better next year? I think it's going to continue to evolve. Um, and, you know, I think fitness is going to continue to evolve. And I think your work's going to continue to evolve here, what you're doing with people. 
Um, you know, it's all it's all good stuff, man. I mean, you're helping a lot of people. You're you're educating people on uh, nutrition, on fitness, on recovery. There's a whole lot of good work. Uh, you know, this this box does. Uh, I see it all the time. You know, people. I come in here. You know, three four days a week at least. Um, and I see a lot of changes in people, and it's all good stuff, man. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for coming on. Well, I appreciate good. your time. Is there? I appreciate the sentiment. It's good to hear. That's what no, you're it's good, man. I, like I said, I see it. I see it. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to talk about or put out there? Because I think this might be a good spot. Right, well, if you're interested in trying CrossFit, you can check us out, social media, uh, CrossFit Barbending on Instagram, on Facebook. Our website is CrossFitBarbending.com. On any one of those pages, you can click a link and sign yourself up for a free trial class. First one's always on us. No obligation, no pressure beyond that point. Yeah, just come out and give us a try. We feel like the service sells itself. Yeah, and I'll second that. I think, you know, like I said, they do great work here. Um, you know, love this box, and, uh, you know, I'm going to keep coming here too. So, uh, And I will also be here for the competition in September uh, doing a podcast from that. I'm going to be talking to athletes. I'll be talking to, you know, probably Jim again. You know, we'll do a, we'll do a whole bunch of stuff. We'll get uh, get uh, people involved, and um, you know, like I said, uh, stay fit, uh, keep yourself moving, don't stop, uh, and subscribe to uh, ExtremeLife.com podcast. You can find it anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, I also post on the Facebook page and on the YouTube page. Um, this will be available in both audio and in uh, and video. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, we got many more episodes coming up. Really exciting stuff. Thanks, Jim, again. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. You're a good guy. You're a good friend. And uh, we'll see you soon.